is a difference between you and me. We both looked into the abyss. But when it looked back at us, you blinked. Hi guys, I'm Gravy here, and this is a DC Legends video. In this video, I'm going to go over Poison Ivy. Full disclosure, I used to, I, I worked on Poison Ivy a lot back when I was like in the mid-game stages because there was there's an ability in her kit that I really, really liked and wanted to use, especially going along with Donna Troy. But lately, like in-game, lately, last two years, I don't really use her much unless she's like a bonus tune or something. So I'm going to go into this. I'm a little bit raw on Poison Ivy. Don't know her as well as I used to, or maybe I do and just haven't used her much. So I'm going in a little bit raw, just a heads up. We'll see how fast my brain can work. But before we get into that, first off, the final round of the Ultimate Kit Challenge. Link below, comment section, description. Please click on that. Please vote. Decide who's the winner of that 50 buck grand prize, 2D Tron or Overtone. Eugene Choi versus Ravager. Please click the link below and vote. Also, I got a lot of comments on my top 10 heroes list. And I, and this is what I said at the beginning of the list. I could not, I really couldn't argue with anybody's points because they were right. You know what I mean? Like they, they, they there were some obvious snubs. Nightwing, someone mentioned Nightwing. And to be frank, I didn't even think about Nightwing. I was like so used to Nightwing being garbage that I never even like, he never crossed my mind. Uh, on top of Nightwing, there was a, someone mentioned Azrael. In that video, I said like, I had, I said I put Barda on last and she ended up being number four. The person who was in place of Barda was Azrael. So like, one thing I've decided to do, and maybe I'll do, I wish I had started doing this a little bit earlier, but it'll be another kind of poll. But what I'm going to try to do is get you guys to decide who is the top 10 or who are the top 10 tunes uh, in DC Legends. And basically the format of this is going to be, I'm gonna set up a form with every single one of the characters in the game. That's right, from Spectre to uh, Adam. Like all from Captain Adam, so many Adams. Uh, from Captain Adam to Constantine, I'm gonna put everybody down there. Then I'm gonna have you guys vote on the 10 that you like the most. And then whoever gets the highest percentage, then we're gonna vote on those. And then whoever's percentage is higher is there from 10 to one. That's how we're gonna rank them. So I'm trying to figure, I'm gonna set that up. Uh, not gonna be in this video, I don't think. Maybe, it, no, no, because we already have the ultimate kit challenge. So I'm gonna wait and like put that out a little bit later, but that's going to be the plan in the future. So that way you guys decide my next top 10 list. And then I can just react to that. Uh, on top of that, I'm still short of a thousand subs and I really want to get to a thousand subs partially because if it, this gets monetized and I can kind of be like, hey, I can put out more content, I can do more stuff and I can justify this actually being something that takes up a lot of my time because I'm actually getting paid to do it. But if you guys don't know, you don't get paid until you have like a thousand subscribers. So anyway, but one of the things I was thinking about doing that I really wanted to do for content was doing a, um, a free to play account. So like start all over. Now I would keep my main account, of course, but then I would start all over and do just a, a free to play account and show you guys every step of the way, all the theories and stuff and philosophies that I put out. Um, I would actually be able to actually like test them, you know what I mean? So I would start my DC Legends account or we'll start a DC Legends account, free to play, but I'm not going to do that until I reach a thousand subscribers. So I need your guys' help as well. Please subscribe. Please find other people who haven't subscribed. Get your whole family. Make them subscribe. They don't even have to watch it. Just tell them to, to, to click on it. Share the channel with them. Once I get to a thousand subs, then I will start the free to play series. And then I will do a mailbag at the very end of this episode. It'll probably be a shorter mailbag. I mean, my introduction is already four minutes long. So in any case, now before we start on Poison Ivy, I drop DC Legends videos every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So please like, please subscribe. And if you don't like it, hit subscribe and hit dislike. I'm okay with that as well. That was a lot of talking all at once, so let me take a sip of coffee. I had cinnamon in my coffee like earlier today, but I don't have any cinnamon in that one, and it's kind of like weird. All right, so anyway, let's go ahead and get to Poison Ivy. There's a skin from Poison Ivy that I really wish I had, um, and I didn't go for it. But I did go for the Mara skin, and I got it. So later today, tomorrow, I'm going to have that Mara skin. So Poison Ivy, although I do like Poison Ivy's look. I like her look a lot. All right, so as you can see, and this is and this is actually like 100% proof that I was building her 
during like my mid my mid uh, game phase. If you're looking at her kit itself, I'm just putting rings in where I could, where I thought they were valuable at the time. So she's built kind of haphazardly. So how many rings do I have now? I think I'll go ahead and put some rings into her now. That might even give you like a better scale of her at a weaker level. But here's the thing. A lot of these things, like for example, the damage and stuff like that, I don't really need because she's already, um, she's a support. So I'm not really using her for damage. But in any case, I'll read through her kit and I just saw some things that proved that I didn't understand fully what I was doing when I was uh, building Poison Ivy to begin with. So on the A1, damage and apply two speed dash to an enemy. She'll gain two speed up from the legendary point. Um, and let me go back to this scale here. Hello, where are you scale? Um, and that's another five damage. I'm not gonna do eight ranks for 5% damage, especially on a support tune. Honestly, I wish I had stopped at level seven um, instead of doing level eight. Now, uh, Pheromone Kiss. Apply two taunts and stamina ups to a teammate. Now, this is the thing I saw immediately when I went there. This was at a time where I didn't know what stamina ups did. So I didn't care to have them. Now that I know what stamina ups do, and that she's gonna be a support tune, and that she's applying taunt, those stamina ups means that she's going to deepen the HP pool of whoever she's giving that taunt to. So if I have somebody beefy, and I just realized, I'm gonna write this down, because a lot of times I say I'll do a pair and then I don't. I might pair her with Parasite. Parasite isn't exactly farmable, but he is tanky as all get out. And I was putting out a video before where it was, if I can get Parasite, a taunt on Parasite, that's a good look. Before, what I would do was I would take a taunt and put it on Bane, let him get hit, and then let him start ramping up. Um, so I will probably put a few more rings into this ability. And then the legendary point is apply crit immunity, 40% chance to call assist. That would have been a good bonus to take. That would have been a good legendary to take because if you're applying the crit immunity, that makes them just that much tankier, that much harder to kill. And then call assist, sure, that's just a little bit of extra. Uh, on the A3, uh, toxic toxin transfer, heavy overheal to, a, to an ally, move up to three debuffs from the target onto a random enemy, up to three additional debuffs um, are moved from an ally onto another random enemy. Uh, if no debuffs on the target, apply two stamina ups. Um, I do, I would like to have more on that heal because she does, she, she's a pretty good healer. She's not great, but she's pretty good. Cross pollinate. This is the key ability. Apply three stamina ups to an ally. Apply and three to a random ally. Copy up to three random buffs from an ally to the rest of the team. Copy up to three random buffs twice. So that's why we use Donna Troy. Donna Troy would get, give a lot of like awareness, and then I would grab those awareness from someone else, and then put them all, <laughs> and then put them on the rest of the team, basically. And then have that much, um, and have that as like the way to make my team a little bit tankier and easier for them to survive. Albeit, mm, that might be a good ability to go, well, put it like this. You could either do it with someone who only buffs themselves and then spread them out. I can't think of anybody off the top of my head. The ones I was thinking about before were like Terra and Barter, whereby they already give all that stamina up and all that um, uh, agility up but then just copying and giving out even more makes your team that much tankier. So, um, all right, I'm gonna keep that in mind. I'm not necessarily really caring about adding more rings to this, so stamina ups would be nice. However, the main thing I want from this ability is the transfer of those buffs. So I'm still leaning towards adding rings to the healing, but not rings to the cross pollinate. All right, next, uh, anaphylactic touch. Passive ability, that's the first time I've seen that word. Is it? I think so. Uh, passive ability, 80% chance to apply two strength downs to enemies that damage poison ivy. Also apply four bleeds. I wish I had taken that four bleeds. I wish instead I would have taken um, the A2. I feel like I would have gone now. The P1A4, the, no, 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 wait, wait. Yeah, the P1A4. Then the A3, oh no, no, it's just, a, it's just a A4, it's not even a P. So the A4, the A3, the A2, then I would go the P1, A5, and then I would do the speed ups. The, oof, three bleeds. The reason I'm kind of hesitant on the four bleeds is just because of the debuff immunity that's running around. It's like, er, um, 
So I would A1, A5, T5, either or. Uh, they're about the same to me. So in any case, so now where I'm gonna put some of these rings, I'm leaning towards the overheal. Here, I kind of want the stamina ups if I'm gonna make them a taunter. And I don't have that many rings left. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this one up to six. Is that the one I wanted? Is that what I want? Is that what I want? Six for 5%, okay, so five for five. You do five rings for 5% overheal. I'm gonna add quite a bit here to the taunt and the stamina ups. So now we're even there. I could do one each, add one more taunt and one more stamina up, or I could do 5% heal. I'm gonna lead towards the stamina ups because now I'm kind of seeing her as that support to make Parasite or anyone else who's tanky into a taunter. The overheal is only 5% overheal anyway, so I'm gonna do two of these and then I'm gonna call it. Hopefully I'll get some more rings later, but that's how I'm kind of distributing the rings at this point. Cross pollinate, as I said, I'm not really chasing after the random or the stamina ups. That is nice and I would put more rings into that if I had more rings, but the priorities for me are her A2 and her A and her uh, A3. Um, and then the A4, I already have what I want from that, uh, but I would put more rings into it next time. All right, so now going into PVP. Whew, how do I use her? Well, the way that I wanna use her is that I think I want her to be with a heavy buff team, but that it also means that I may not necessarily have to worry about having a Terra to, because I'm gonna, I could use her to remove buffs. Let's go against maybe um, an easier team. Is this an easier team? I don't know. Um, <laughs> I could also pair her with Kyle Rayner. Okay, here's what, here's my thought process real quick. Poison Ivy, I want Poison Ivy to be with buffers because I want her to take the buff, the buffs that are on the other team and spread them out to everyone, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and put Poison Ivy in. Kyle Rayner on his A2 does give uh, damage immunity to everyone. It only lasts for, I think, one turn though. Let's test play that, because I don't know how long if the buffs are gonna get extended when I do that. And then next, let's see here. We do have, let's put Nightwing in. I don't use Nightwing nearly as much as I should, and I built him wrong. I built Nightwing so wrong. I messed up on one of his legendary points because I misread the dadgum thing um, or didn't think about it clearly enough. And so now it's like, er, I got to take him out of five just so I can have him built correctly. Um, and then if I'm going to have him, I'm going to go ahead. I have to run Clayface because of how terribly, 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 terribly I built Nightwing. So now with Poison Ivy. Because you're not looking at her for damage, because, I, or at least me, I'm not looking at her for damage, I'm looking at her more for support, uh, more buff support, and then she helps with the debuffs and she can do some healing. Um, I think that in that case, she's pretty plug and play, albeit she may not be good for every situation. She is still like a plug and play tune in my, in my view. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and maybe try to one shot Spectre here. That almost worked. Oh, thank you for the call assist. Now I'm gonna go ahead and give out the damage immunity. Now here's the thing, when she comes around, the idea is I want to grab that damage immunity, spread it to everybody else. Or at least the awareness, because there's a ton of awareness over there too. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this on Kyle Rayner. What's up, what's up, and what got spread? Oh, did it just spread all of the agility ups? Okay, that just makes us tankier. That's the one thing I don't like about the kid is that it's random, but then again, how are they gonna make you, or how are they gonna allow you to select them, right? Uh, let's go ahead and stun Barda. I think we're good from here on out, um, unless Star Starfire decides to go nuts, but I think we're pretty good. So yeah, this is what I would, like Kyle Rayner, you can see all those awareness on him right now. That's what I would do with Donna Troy. There would be a bunch of awareness and I would want to spread that awareness to as many places as possible. I do like the fact that she put a taunt on Kyle Rayner because he has a bunch of awareness and he will have damage immunity. So that's not bad at all either. Um, but yeah, that's what I would do. That's principally what I would use her for. Give the taunt to Bane from time to time. Overheal Bane to get him to go get going on his out of turn attacks. And then if I was with a Donna Troy or whoever else, I would use those, uh, I would use her A4, whatever it is, uh, cross pollinate to move uh, debuffs to other members of the team. Now, the more I think about that, hmm, 
Next, I'm going to use Parasite. I'm gonna use Parasite next. And then I'm gonna try to put the taunt on him and then see if that makes him, because he is a tanky taunter that doesn't have taunt. So I'm gonna see if that helps him along the uh, taunter path, which I'm pretty sure it will. I'm just wondering how effective it will be with him. Hey, come on now. Come on now. Get up out the paint. Oh, she gonna take forever. I think she's gonna take forever. But I think you guys get the point. I'm tempted to actually like quit this match because you guys might, because I might be here forever. Somebody hit Barter very hard, please. Thank you, Nightwing. That was not hard enough, apparently. Boom, there we go. All right, so now. I'm gonna run her with, run her with Parasite. Actually, no, I'll run her with Bane first, and then try to build kind of a tanky team, or a tanky, a farmable team. So Bane is farmable. Poison Ivy, you're gonna get her today from the uh, PVP uh, rewards, which is why I'm making that video now. Uh, let's see. Oi, oi. You got Black Flash and Spectre up in the paint. Oh, uh, Cheetah. All right, so I'll put Cheetah in because I'm not gonna be able to match up with speed because I'm not gonna use Black Flash. I'm making a, a farmable team here. I'm gonna use Bane. Where you at, my dude? Um, there aren't any taunters. I am very, very tempted, although this might be remarkably dumb. I'm very tempted to put in Batman to take care of Spectre in a one-shot capacity. However, that, that does not seem smart at all. Should I put, well, no, because I want Bane to be the taunter as well. So that means I need to have a heavy damage. Uh, I'm gonna put in Etrigan for the moment and then I'll come back to it. Dada Troy is not, I mean, Star Sapphire can heal. She can't put that debuff immunity up. Um, I'm tempted to put in Star Fly. You know what? You know what, you know what? Let's run with this real quick. Let's run with this. All right, so we're gonna go first because of Cheetah's turn meter which is great, fantastic, and wonderful. Um, then I'm gonna put the taunt on Bane, hope for Spectre to start attacking him. And I want Bane to start getting at Spectre. So let's see. Let's see if we can take out Spectre with Cheetah. Doubt it, but uh, he is overhealed, right? And that means he'll attack twice, but I would love for him to have Dagon, Dagon. All right, well, Bane's kind of ramping up at the moment. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the taunt on Bane. That is the taunt, right? I'm gonna put the taunt on Bane, the stamina ups, everything. Everybody focus your attention on him. Albeit, I do not like the idea that Arcus is there and I'm giving Bane all this attention. Mm. And of course, Spectre removes everything I just did. So we are screwed. Let's go ahead and get out of here. Uh, let's go ahead and get out of here. That is terrible. I just may have to put in Batman just to take out Spectre. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. I picked the perfect time to say I'm going to put in a farmable team right now. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, I should have checked the team first and been like, I'll do farmable in the next one. Uh, so here we go. By the way, Edrigan farmable and Red Alert. Switch Red Alert does mean farmable. Uh, Bane, Cheetah, Farmable, and Campaign. Oh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Who is someone who can hit hard? That is Farmable. That is not Batman. Maybe it should be Batman, though. Maybe, let's see how Batman gets along then. Because, ah, come on now. Because Etrigan is special damage anyway, so those strength ups didn't really benefit him at all. So having Etrigan, having Batman in with those strength ups, plus he'll be invisible, he'll do the crit damage on his A3, still give the taunt to Bane. Only thing I'm worried about after that point is, uh, well, the only thing. The things I will be worried about at that point are Arcus and Black Flash, but we, we stand a much better chance if Spectre's not there. So. Hey now. Hey now, what are you doing? Come on. And I can hit Black Flash, and that means he can only do his A1 because he'll have silence. Um, 
this will heal and remove buffs, right? Because right now he's stunned. And I don't... Mm, I, mm, I can't give everybody invisibility because then nobody will be invisible. All right, so let's try to move this stun, right? Mm, and now she's gone. <laughs> so she got the stun off and now everyone's gonna die. Uh, so then oh, I may not be able to do my Bane thing I really want to do my Bane thing but I may have to put in Star Sapphire in place of Bane in order to get this thing cracking or should I put in Star Sapphire in place of Batman Batman took care of Spectre like well enough so oh 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 Let's see, let's see, let's see. Who am I gonna put in place? Batman is taking care of Spectre. I need to take Bane out. He's not really made for this damage dealing situation. If I have Bane out, I'm gonna put Grundy in as the taunter. He can take whatever Arcus has to deal. So then in this role, I'm going to be using, I'll be using a Poison Ivy to probably take the strength ups from anyone and just spread them to everyone and make Bane, Grundy, and Cheetah all hit harder. So that will be the plan from that from that point from my point of view. So that's still eh, why not taking a little bit off of them. Every little bit helps, right? All right. So now let's take out Spectre. Now, now, that's what's up. Really. This game, game be cheating, bro, bro. Game be cheating, yo. Oh, I cannot believe that just happened. Oh, that's so infuriating. Wusa, Wusa, Wusa. Let me get some of this coffee. Although I don't think like caffeinating myself is gonna help me keep my nerves calm. Wusa, man. What was that? Really though, what was that? Oh my goodness! All right, here we go. <laughs> here we go. All right, now I was about to say you. Now he wants it. What? You know what? You know what? In the words of, uh, I don't know if you guys watch any sports, anything, but in the words of Swagoo and Perk. You a liar, and the truth ain't in you. Oh. So we got a bunch of strength ups on the Batman and the Poison Ivy in that scenario. You got to love that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and hit Black Flash. Let's see how hard he hits with all these stuff. Eh. Eh. Let's go ahead and put the taunt back onto Grundy with some stamina ups. Help him survive these attacks. That's a bet. Yep, 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 yep. That's a good look. Now let's see if we can take care of. She's healing. She's doing that support. That that's heavy overheal. Come on now. I'm gonna need you to drop off those strength ups, Arcus. This is not. Oh, all right. Come on. Let's get that taunt back up. Although she seems to be working well with taunters. Like she's in the background. She's doing her thing. She gave him stamina up. She gave him. She gave everybody strength ups. It's all looking relatively good. So it seems as though. She, like, because the Taunter Grundy is already built, awa, because the Taunter Grundy is already built to be beefy, giving him more stamina ups just helps him in that, in that uh, way. But at the same time, you could drop the death immunity off. Oh, come on. Y'all could have dropped that death immunity off by now. Um, but giving him back the taunt was helpful to us, right? Boom. All right, so let's go ahead and run this on auto. I'll do one more match and then I'll get into a mailbag. Because I still want to try the uh, Parasite um, Poison Ivy pairing to see if that's even viable. But she did seem to go along well with Grundy there. And I do like how many stent, how many strength ups she gave to like Batman and Cheetah. Like it might even be worth it to run her with the Red Robin so that she gets a chance to go before everybody else. And then she can spread those strength ups to everybody else and make the entire team stronger. I could run her with my ramp teams, maybe. One of my ramp teams. 
and spread either intelligence ups or strength ups. Like she's not bad. I think that she could have a place for you in the game. I would definitely recommend like you getting her frags, and if you, especially if you're early to mid game, if you, I mean, I think she requires some work and some knowledge of the game and how you're building it. Like the strength ups video, the strength ups, agility ups videos that I put out for the PVP Academy. I'm doing an intelligence ups video after I get done um, ranking up my Constantine because I need a specific build for that for that uh, video. But um, no, I think if you if you utilize those buffs and buffs in the right way. Then you can definitely, she, she can definitely have a place for you. Uh, let's go ahead and put Parasite in. I got so busy yapping, realizing how much value that Poison Ivy can potentially have. All right, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. So we're gonna use him as a taunter. This is a good situation for him to be a taunter. I think I want to put Red Robin in to be. No, you know what? You know what? You know what? You know what? If he's gonna be the taunter, but then I don't. We're gonna go. Let me just put him in place right now for the time being. And then I'm gonna put Impulse in. I was using Impulse over the uh, the um, Alien Blitz, which I need to read in the history of Impulse because I don't know why he's an alien. Um, I thought Impulse just came from the future. I didn't realize he was an alien. Um, who do I want at lead now? Who will have something that I want to spread? Uh, if we go for an affinity matchup, then I'm going to lean towards Mystics. Enchantress might be a good one to run with her, actually. Let's see, any other leads or anybody in general. Donna Troy, I could probably use to spread awareness. Um, Aquaman, not so much. Mm, I used to also run her on the evasion team with like um, Harley Quinn. Batgirl where I would just spread all the evasion ups like you can get you can get outside of the box the more I'm talking about it the more I'm like I wish I had used her more or I wish that I do use her more because it, it just sounds like fun I used to spread men's from Star Sapphire <sighs> let's see if we can make this easy work how about that I'm, just, I'm looking all around let's just do Roz I think Roz is actually up this month as one of the um, tunes that you can use in one of the events and then I'll do a couple of comments because this is running longer than I thought. I'll do a couple of comments and then I'll sign off. So here we go. Who do I want to stun? Go ahead and do that. Doesn't matter that much. We're going to strip whatever buff we can from them. Hooray, hooray for Roz giving out that disease and the silence. Gotta love it. Now I'm going to give Parasite the taunt and the stamina ups. He has now become our tanky taunter. He's a excellent beefy guy beefy tune let's let that disease spread a little bit nobody has any buffs i shouldn't have used the a3 but some of them went down all right more disease more disease this worked out way better than i expected wow i'm gonna have some fun with this i'm gonna i think i'm gonna use poison ivy a little bit more i think i think i'm gonna have some fun with poison ivy this this month this week i should say hell maybe this month because that was fun. All right, so I'll get into a quick mailbag. And then I will call it a video. Uh, where are you at? Where are you at? Where are you at? Where are you at? Who you with? Here we go. So going into the comments. Um, so, oh, well, this is on my DC. Because I have on my Patreon uh, DC Legends roster advice. For those who are members of the Patreon, then you can give me your roster, and then I do a whole video based on your roster and what I think you should do. Um, so that was from, this is from Killer Instinct. That Black Flash would really help me out. Uh -huh. Black Flash helps out a lot of people. <laughs> they need to have this pack. Uh, next is Darth Derek. Someone in my alliance said to save gems for lowest packs. Agree or disagree if I don't have any currently. Um, and then Ash Azad put as a reply, Lois or Barda. Okay, so, and this is kind of, this is going to be kind of difficult for me to give an evaluation on just because I just, like, we just got finished with raids yesterday, and Lois is a absolute monster when it comes to raids, and if you have a good team, even if you don't have a good team and you're just trying to get some, like, solo trophies, like, Lois is invaluable if she's built correctly. Like, she is absolutely invaluable. She is putting up, yesterday, 
against like negative affinity, she was putting up nine million in raids. Like she is nuts. I am legitimately tempted to take her 8011 as a damage dealer just for raids. I don't use her in PvP. I think she'd probably be good in PvE content. Um, but like with regards to raids, to get those resources and those milestones as well, she might be worth the investment in terms of buying her packs. As you guys know, I'm typically anti-pack, but she might be worth the value of packs if um, if nothing more than she's just going to be a raid farmer for you. She's going to be, she's going to take out a lot. Let me, you know what? Let me, let me, let me see what's going on here. Let me see what's going on here. We'll put soups in there. We'll have, who was I running before? Uh, let's go ahead and put in Poison Ivy real quick. That is not Poison Ivy. Oh, and I put heroes, didn't I? I always do that because I always use the female heroes. Um, and then... Because Hippolyta is great at giving buffs, and then if Poison Ivy is just spreading them, awesome. So, yeah, and then as far as Lois or Barda, Barda is much the same, except Barda is like a PvP beast. She's like the best taunter in the game still, even with Superman and his rework, I still would count Barda as the best taunter. Um, I mean, yeah, I kind of agree with Ash, or I kind of agree with Ash Azad. Lois is worth those gems. Sorry, I mean, check the gem ratio before you buy immediately, but Lois is worth those gems, and Barda is too. What can I say? She is. All right, let me get into the next two. I get one from Doomslayer. What's up, Doomslayer? Um, but this one is from Don Black. In the character de description, <laughs> I was being funny because I saw that they made a mistake in the character description where they put, like, his, and then I said that, um, Pertula, sorry. For Tula, when I did my DC, oh, of course there's this out of sync issue that's been going on with red alerts ever since they said they fixed all those bugs. I go through like two red alert battles and then it has to restart because something's wrong. Um, in the character description for Aqua Girl, it states that she is the half sister and uses the pronoun her multiple times. It doesn't appear that she is gender fluid, but the WB made an error in uh, her superpower descriptions. I know, I know, I was having some fun. Albeit, it would be nice to see her as a gender fluid uh, character. Well, no, because I already have that for Aqualad, kind of. Aqualad's gay, or is he transgender? I believe he's transgender. Anyway, that doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. Um, then Doomslayer, take a break as more resting you are. The sooner the kit tournament will come and Merry Christmas. I know it's a little early, but it's already there in advance. Thank you, Doomslayer. Merry Christmas to you as well. Happy holidays. Um, happy Hanukkah, which is already past, so happy Hanukkah in the past. Um, so, and every other holiday that I miss because I'm too stupid and ignorant to know all holidays that are celebrated around this time. So, happy holidays to all of you. The kit tournament, the next kit tournament might be a little while away because this one is still kind of going. I was thinking about doing it once a year. It might be reduced like once every six months, but the next thing that I'm going to be doing is setting up the top 10. Is this going to even work? Setting up the top 10, uh, I guess I'm gonna call you guys my on for committee or whatever, but you guys, the viewers, the subscribers are going to decide who are the top 10 tunes in DC Legends. I'm gonna set up that form. It won't be now. It'll probably happen right after the Ultimate Kit Challenge because gotta have that form up first. And then once the Ultimate Kit Challenge is done, then I'll put up the form for the top 10 tunes as voted for by the subscribers. So in any case, that's gonna be it. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, please subscribe, and I'll see you next time. I'm going to check this real quick, though. Oh, this is looking ugly. Oh, because they had Spectre. I didn't even check for that. Guys, do as I say, not as I do. Look at who you're fighting, and then decide accordingly what you want to do. Oh, well, it would be nice if she did the cross-pollination right now and gave herself, like, damage immunity or something. Oh, Stunning Spectre. That's a plus. Come on, now. What are we? Oh, no. Oh, yes. Oh, no. Mm. Thank you guys for watching. See you next time. And it had to restart, of course. <laughs>